everyone, it's Nicole here at the Harmonious Hippie. Today's video is just going to be a really quick flow. Uh, this is just going to be a quick flow that you can do uh, in the morning to wake you up uh, or at any point in your day if you are short of time but would like to get in a little bit of uh, movement. So all you need today is just a blanket if you have tender knees, otherwise maybe a water bottle if you'd like that. Um, but we're not going to be using props today because this is going to be a, a relatively quick drop and flow kind of uh, kind of practice today. So just grab your mat and let's get started. Hey everyone, so we're going to get started laying down today. So coming into your Shavasana pose, your corpse pose, laying down on the back. If this is uncomfortable for you, you can always take Shavasana in the fetal position or you can keep your knees up falling towards each other if it's better for your lower back. Otherwise, just coming to your standard Shavasana. Legs out long, arms releasing down, palms face up, and closing down the eyes, coming to the body here. And right away, dropping into the breath and becoming more aware of that breath flowing in and out. Releasing the body down into the ground. And beginning to deepen the breath, let's take an inhale to the count of four. Hold the breath for one, and then exhale to the count of five. Inhaling to one, two, three, four, hold, and exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, hold, exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, hold, and exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Now we're going to inhale to a count of five, holding for two, and exhaling six, five, four, three, two, one, last time inhaling, one, two, three, four, five, hold for two, and exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Take a deep inhale through the nose, and open the mouth, exhale, sigh. Do that once more, deep inhale through the nose. And exhale out the mouth. And bringing the knees up towards the chest. Wrapping the arms around the knees, giving the self a hug, perhaps rocking a little bit. And beginning to rotate the knees in opposite directions, same direction, whatever is comfortable for you. Just massaging into the lower back and then switching directions. And now beginning to rock and roll forward and back until you roll all the way up into a seated position. Again, if this is uncomfortable on your back or your tailbone, you can always come to the fetal position and push yourself up like we do at the end of Shavasana. So just beginning to rock and roll, trying to slow the movement down a little bit. And coming up to your seated position, we're gonna flip over onto our hands and knees here into your tabletop position. Rocking back and forth, releasing the wrists. And when you come to neutral, 
just ensuring that your wrists are stacked under your shoulders and your knees are stacked under your hips. Just taking a couple of cat-cow variations here. So inhaling, the gaze comes up, dropping the belly, arching into the spine. And on your exhale, squeezing the navel to spine, pressing into the hands, pulling the scapula apart, tucking the chin. Squeeze that breath out. And then inhale, dropping the belly. And exhale, curling the spine. Just pull in with your breath for a couple more. And returning to a neutral spine, you can walk your hands forward just a tiny bit here, rooting into the hands, pressing into the knuckles, curling the toes under. We're going to lift the tailbone up into our downward facing dog. You can heel, toe here, walk the feet out. You can rock the tailbone side to side, wagging your little tail. <laughs> and pressing into the hands, press back through the shoulders, making sure that you're not just winging out here. You wanna tuck your navel to spine, stitch the core together. You can have the knees bent here if that's comfortable for you. Taking another breath here. And then we're gonna to inhale to our high plank. Again, depending on your anatomy, like for me, I take quite a short down dog because I have a very long torso and long hamstrings, but for you it may be different. So for me, when I come forward to a high plank, I clearly <laughs> need more space. So there's nothing wrong with walking your hands forward or wiggling the feet out. So now we're in our high plank here, flat back. We're gonna drop the knees, chest, chin, coming down slowly. And we're gonna curl the shoulders back, wrap those around. And inhale up into your baby cobra using the strength of the back, not the hands. So you can lift the hands here. And exhale down. Let's do that again. Peel the shoulders back, inhale. And exhale, release. One last time, inhale. And exhale, release. Opening the right hand out to the side. We're going to start to roll over towards that side. So again, checking in with your shoulders, your chest at all points here to make sure that you're not going too far into this. Again, if you are um, chesty like myself, you, you may need to lift up and over instead of just rolling straight over. So make sure you're not hurting yourself here. So just starting to roll over towards that shoulder, moving to where it's comfortable. You can raise that left leg and bring it around. Just coming to where is comfortable for you. Relaxing. Just breathing into that shoulder, breathing into the chest. You can also relax the head down if you like. However feels the best for you. Working out that shoulder and pectoral. And coming back to center, you can work the leg back. Again, you may need to lift up to come back over. <laughs> and we're gonna move right onto the other side. So extending that left arm out and beginning to roll over. You can lift up that top leg. Wherever's comfortable for you. Again, you can relax the head down to the ground if that's comfortable here. Breathing space into that shoulder, into the front of the chest. And slowly and carefully rolling back over, coming back to the front here. And we're going to push back up through the hands and just come into a child's pose. So grab your blanket if you have one or you'd like one and place that under your knees. So just widening the knees, mat width or wider, big toes come to touch and sink your tailbone back towards your heels, stretching the arms out in front, forehead comes to the mat. 
Releasing into the hips here. Breathing deeply through the nose. And slowly coming up, we're gonna remove our blanket. Again, coming through tabletop, pressing into the hands, we're gonna lift back up into downward facing dog, lifting that tailbone high. And we're gonna really plant into that left foot, lifting the right leg up. Make sure your toe stays pointing down so that your hip stays closed and in even with the other, so you're not opening up right away. We wanna keep that as even as possible. And then we can open, start to bring the heel towards the bum, stay even weight in the hands, stretching into that hip. You can rotate the hip here. And inhale, placing that foot back down, planting into the right foot, raising up the left, again, keeping the hips squared, and then opening up and bringing that heel to your bum, even in the hands, breathing here, and circling that hip. Bringing that foot back down, inhale, gaze at the thumbs, and step or hop to the front of your mat into your forward fold. You can bend the knees here if that's comfortable. <clears throat> And like a rag doll, curl in the spine, rolling up slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae. Pulling the shoulders at the top. Head's the last thing to come up. Coming into our mountain pose, Tadasana. Rooting through the feet, tucking the tailbone, navel to spine, open across the shoulders. Take a deep inhale here. Exhale. Inhale, sweeping the arms up overhead, palms come to touch. You can take a little back bend here and exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, fold, planting the hands, stepping back into your high plank. You can drop knees, chest, chin, or come through your full chaturanga here. Inhale into your back bend and exhaling through downward facing dog. Take a breath here. Inhale, gazing up at the thumbs, stepping or hopping to the front of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bending the knees, inhale, sweep the arms up overhead. And hands come to heart center. Moving straight back in, inhale, sweep the arms up. Baby back bend. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Planting the hands, stepping or hopping back into your high plank. Knees, chest, chin, or full chaturanga here. And bending into your back bend. And exhale, down the dog. Deep breath through the nose. And opening the mouth side out. Inhale, gazing at the thumbs. Stepping or hopping to the front of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bending the knees, inhale, sweep the arms up overhead, palms come to touch. Exhale, heart center. Take a breath here. Inhale, sweep the arms up overhead. Exhale, fold. And planting the hands, let's step back to our downward dog. And then dropping the knees, coming back down to the ground. We're gonna be finishing up here with a couple more poses just before we come into our Shavasana. So first we are going to sit down on our bums and we're gonna be doing the hip opener. So this is called fire log pose. This can be quite intense. Uh, so do check in with yourself throughout this. Make sure that you're not doing anything that's hurting you but also I would challenge you to stay in a pose for a little bit longer than you would typically want to. 
pending obviously pain, leave immediately. Um, but if it's just an intensity, I would challenge you to stay with it. So we're gonna bend whichever leg you'd like in the front first. Uh, try to keep it parallel to your mat, flexing the toes back to protect the knee. And then we're going to bring our other foot up on top so that both of our shins are in line here. And you can begin to come forward. Perhaps your knee is all the way down here. If you've got some space here like I do, you can always bring a block or something underneath your knee. And just playing with that foot and finding where it's comfortable while also staying in the pose. It's very common for people to want to come here and doing like a cross-legged pose and they find that it's a lot easier. But you want to make sure that you are actually doing the pose and uh, working into that hip. So you do want your shins to be parallel here. Again, flexing both toes back to protect the knees. Inhale up tall and exhale, you can start to sink forward if that's comfortable. Again, you may notice that some emotions come up here. You may start to feel a little angry or sad. Just allow that to happen. Breathe deeply into it. Noticing if you're scrunching up anywhere, if you're clenching your jaw or have the shoulders up at the ears, just releasing that down, trying to relax as much as you can. I know this is a very intense pose, so relax may seem a little silly, but try your best. Making sure that your breath stays flowing in and out. And inhaling, we're coming back up, releasing those legs out in front of you and just give those a shake, releasing that. Ooh, and coming into the other side here, we're gonna bring that shin parallel to the front of the mat, flexing the toes back, and then picking up that foot, keeping the shins parallel, flexing both toes back, feeling that in the hips, maybe in the glutes as well. Inhaling up tall, and exhale, beginning to sink forward into that pose. Again, relaxing the face, relaxing the shoulders. Breathing into that hip. Think of sending that breath, swirling around that hip joint, releasing any tension there. Noticing what's surfacing for you. Letting that pass by, just letting it be. back up, releasing the leg, shaking those legs out. And we're gonna come down onto our backs now for a twist. I apologize, that's the cat. <laughs> so you can come up with your legs even in the little 90 degree bend here, or you can always cross one leg over the other if you'd like. Either way, just bring the knees up to parallel, arms can be out in a T. Inhaling here, and on your exhale, dropping the knees over to one side, making sure that that shoulder that you're twisting away from stays rooted into the ground, so perhaps your knees don't quite make it, you can come up on your feet like this. That hand can grab for the knees, your gaze can be looking up at the ceiling or gazing towards the hand that you're twisting away from. Breathing deeply into that twist. Allowing the exhales to twist you deeper. Inhales create space. And inhaling the head back to center, followed by the knees. You can plant the feet here to replace your hips. And then we're moving right into the other side. So inhaling here and exhaling over to the opposite side. Again, keeping that opposing shoulder planted into the ground. Gaze can be up at the ceiling or towards your hand that you're twisting away from. Inhales create space. And exhales allow you to twist a little bit deeper. 
Heidi's got the zooms a little bit. <laughs> Breathing into that twist. And inhaling the head back to center, followed by the knees. And just quickly taking a pose of your choice. I like to do a happy baby before I come into my Shavasana, just to release those hips one last time. So you can always do that. You can take a shoulder stand. Whatever last pose you feel you need to get out those last little wiggles and get you ready to take your corpse pose. Like I said, today's practice was just a quick little one. So if you would like to carry on moving, you can go ahead and do that as well. It's whatever feels right for you. So just taking that shape now and releasing that last bit of energy. and then coming down into your corpse pose, into your Shavasana. Again, as I said at the beginning, if Shavasana is uncomfortable for you, you can always take the fetal position on your side, or you can take Shavasana with your knees up and just falling in towards each other. Whatever works for you, you wanna make sure that you're comfortable with your body. Releasing the hands up to the sides, palms up, tucking the shoulders under. Closing down the eyes. Coming back to the breath. Noticing any changes in your body, how that feels. It's a quick little practice today, but any time spent on the mat is always beneficial. Even if you just get on your mat to sit in silence for a bit, Taking time out of your day to do something just for yourself is the most important thing here. So just feeling a moment of gratitude for your body, for yourself. And then allowing your body to surrender into the ground. Knowing that you're held and supported. Reaching the arms up overhead and taking a full body stretch here. Maybe letting out a sigh or a yawn. And just taking your time. Moving very slowly here. If you'd like to stay in your Shavasana, you can go ahead and do that. And if you're ready, you can start to roll over to one side in your fetal position. Resting the head on your arm for a moment. And when you're ready, pressing 
up, coming to a comfortable seat here, cross-legged. Hands come to heart center, bowing the head slightly. Thank yourself for taking time out of your day to take care of you. Whether you are a parent or a cat parent like me, <laughs> or perhaps you're just taking care of yourself, all of these things are so important and so consuming that it is very important to make sure that you do take time to pause honor your body and your mind. And again, with this short practice today, it may have felt like just a little snippet of your usual yoga practice, but if that's all that you had available today, just know that you did exactly what you needed to do. And that is perfect. That is so important. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. The light in me honors, acknowledges, and bows to the light in you. Namaste. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this quick little practice. Um, I hope Heidi wasn't too crazy for you. I'm not sure if you can see her there. She's here snuggling. Um, so she's left her zoomies behind, I guess, now that Shavasana is over. <laughs> um, I hope you guys have a really great day. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And uh, let me know in the comments below what you would like to see from me next week. Uh, or if you just want to say hi, that's great as well. I appreciate you guys so much. I'm so happy to have you here with me. Uh, please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I post every Saturday and occasionally during the week if uh, the mood strikes. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day, wonderful weekend, wonderful week, wonderful life. <laughs> You're so important. Thank you so much. Namaste.